we often think of fats as something that just sits there, storing calories and making our clothes tighter. But fat tissues is actually a powerful endocrine organ. It talks to your brain, muscles, and mitochondria through hormones. And one of the most important ones is adiponectin. Unlike many hormones from fat cells, adiponectin is the good one. It keeps your body metabolism flexible, improves insulin sensitivity, and helps your body burn fat for energy. When adiponectin is working well, your cells easily switch between using glucose and fat. That's what we call metabolic flexibility. It means steady energy, balanced blood sugar, and less inflammation. But when adiponectin drops, your metabolism slows down. You start storing more fat instead of burning it, and insulin resistance builds up. And that low-grade inflammation begins to spread silently through the whole body. Studies show that people with higher adiponectin levels have better mitochondrial efficiency and lower risk of type 2 diabetes, even when their body weight is the same. And it's not about how much fat you have. It's about how that fat behaves. The good news is you can raise adiponectin naturally. Omega-3 fats, regular exercise, short fasting periods, and even cold showers can help reactivate adiponectin. These habits train your metabolism to stay adaptable and responsive. In functional medicine, we look at adiponectin not as a weight marker, but as a reflection of how well your mitochondria and fat tissues communicate. When that connection works well, your fat stops being harmful and it becomes protective. And now let's exercise and see how my adiponectin will behave. <laughs> 